What is going on, people? Cody from Southeast Soft Wash. It is uh, Thursday, the 13th of October. We got an anniversary coming up. Me and Emily will be married, oh my gosh, 2005, 2015, 2000. I don't know, it's a long time, right? It's a long time, so I gotta do something for that. But I'm up here at the shop early. It's uh, about seven o'clock. I've been up here a couple hours. <clears throat> I thought we were getting invaded by the Russians. Turns out it was just the cats galloping. It's amazing how much a couple of pounds of cat can can make uh, noise, decibel level. It sounded like a herd of Mongolians coming through my house. So I woke up, I thought I was about to get to go, you know, do the gunfight thing. And then it was like, oh, just a cat. So now I'm wide awake, go ahead and get to the shop and uh, get some things accomplished before the guys get here and I get distracted a million times. I want to talk to you guys quickly this morning about safety and before you click off this video because you don't find that to be a sexy topic let me encourage you to stay through the rest of this video i'll try my best to make it short we had a guy on facebook the other day i was scrolling came across this comment and uh, i read the first few lines he said hey i'm selling all my equipment getting out of the business and this is why so i kept reading he didn't have any any equipment from us he was just uh sharing his story and his story was pretty uh, dramatic. He, he's been in the business about a year. He's done fairly good on the revenue side, but about late July, he fell off of a roof and shattered a pelvis, messed up a vertebrae, and he's basically never gonna be able to work in this line of work ever again because he's, uh, he's gonna have some medical problems. So let's take some takeaways from this story. Uh, number one, I appreciate him sharing that. He did not have to. He shared his failures so that we could learn from them. Guys, if you don't know this about me, I'm a former safety and compliance guy. That's what I did for about six years. And uh, I've tried to segue that over into our industry as much as possible and encourage guys and warn them and kind of guide them into the safety area of the business because the truth is we make so, such good margins and it's such a low threshold of entry gig that if you're not uh, careful, you'll really overlook the safety piece of the business and now you're a walking humongous liability, plus the fact that you could get hurt uh, pretty badly any day, right? So let's let's go through what happened to him and how we can take some takeaways from that. So mid-July, super hot. He's cleaning a roof about three o'clock in the afternoon. No helper uh, by himself, no respirator. He got up on the roof, no harness, no safety equipment, and he got lightheaded because of the bleach fumes. Uh, he's walking back and forth across the roof, areas that he had sprayed inhaling some fumes eyes got irritated uh coughing a little bit just because of the it's it's hot it's july uh when you spray that hot roof the the mix is going to evaporate and so he he wound up falling off the roof pretty bad uh shattered pelvis messed up vertebrae so he's in a mess right kind of passed out fell over probably dehydrated if i had to guess probably a some some mild possible heat stroke conditions present uh we don't know that for sure but if i had to guess that may be a factor as well. So here's some things that we would do differently, guys. Number one, uh, we stay hydrated, especially in the dead of summer. At three o'clock in the afternoon, it's not ideal time to hop up on a roof and, and try to do a bunch of uh, work on a roof that's pretty dangerous. Number two, no harness. That is a OSHA violation. Uh, now, as business owners, big caveat, OSHA cannot dictate what we do as the ownership of the company. They can dictate what you allow employees to do. However, being harnessed is common sense, right? We don't wanna be up on a platform that we can fall off of. So make sure that you're wearing proper safety gear, which if you're gonna do it the harness route, you have to install a roof anchor, big long lanyard, uh, OSHA rated harness system. We don't really like doing that because it's just a big uh, hassle. So here's how we do it. We stay on the ladder. This particular house was a one story, which means he probably could have shot that thing from the ground if he had the right equipment. Uh, our stuff will definitely shoot a one story from the ground. It'll shoot two stories from the ground with a 12 volt. No problem all day long. We do roof cleanings from the ground. So the reason we wanna be able to do that is so we don't have to fool with the ladder. Option one is definitely from the ground. Option two is from a ladder. Um, now ladders are bringing in some risk. So you wanna make sure that you're doing that carefully and properly as well. But he was basically doing it the worst possible way you can do it. No helper on site so that if he is injured, he's got somebody there you know, to uh, to get emergency services on the way and take them to the hospital, whatever needs to happen. Uh, so there's a lot of failure points. And again, I'm not beating up on him. He shared this story so that we could learn from it. And uh, 
We, that's what we need to do. We need to learn from it. So guys, we we have this thing right here. It is our Southeast Softwash Safety Manual. This is mine. We've sold a bunch of these. There would be a link down below if you guys want to get one. I highly encourage you to have policies and procedures, especially if you've got employees. Now, this was him getting hurt in his own business. That's bad enough. It would be even worse if you had an employee to get hurt. So our uh, policy manual that we sell it's got a lot of stuff in here like bloodborne pathogens, eye wash stations, ladder safety, uh, fall protection, which would have been the, the part that he was uh, involved in there, fall protection, uh, standard operating procedures, uh, road test for driver road test if you've got a fleet vehicle, which most of us do, a company truck. So there's a bunch of sections in there that are uh, training sections. So I don't create this book. The guy that I used to work with, uh, I did the OSHA safety compliance stuff for about six years. He's done it for about 45, I don't know, maybe 40 years. Brian's not that old. So about 40 years. Brian, if you watch this video, I'm not calling you out, dude. But he is a guru on the safety stuff. It took him about a year to research our uh, our world and put this book together. And this book does not do you any good if you don't implement it. So let me make that statement. You've got to, you've got to have policies and procedures, and you also have to implement those religiously so that you're covering yourself, you're covering your company, and you don't have people out there getting hurt, including yourself, right? It does not matter how much money you make if you're laid up in the hospital for the rest of your life or if you're possibly a fatality, which is uh, what we're trying to avoid, right? We want to make money. We don't want to get hurt doing it. So lessons learned from this guy's story. Again, we wish him the best. I uh, hate it that this happened to him, but uh, we definitely want to learn what we can from uh, the takeaways, right? So if you guys are interested in getting a policy and procedure manual, there will be a link down below. If you get one, you will email us over. It'll walk you through the process. Uh, you buy it on the website. It'll email you back. You'll walk. Uh, you'll, you will email us over your logo and your company name, and it will be printed throughout this book. So it will be a book for your company, and basically it's plug and play. Now you've got a safety, uh, the safety side of your company sort of took care of, and now it's just up to you to implement the stuff in your manual on the weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annual basis. All right, guys, let's get in here and get some work done today, knock some rigs out. Uh, we are whittling the queue down as much as we possibly can. I think we're going to do six or seven rigs this week, and uh, that's what we're going to do. See you guys in the next video.